Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got some very bullish news to share with you all. SBI Holdings, the CEO and President Yoshitaka Katao released some statements saying Ripple will IPO after the SEC lawsuit is over. Also, Coinbase is in, has integrated PayPal as a payment option to buy crypto. This is big for mainstream adoption. Germany has opened the floodgates for crypto investing from institutions. I'll break that down for you guys. And MasterCard is doing something big with CBDCs. Before I get into it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, friendly reminder, I have a free weekly newsletter, 100% free, all crypto insights and knowledge. Link in the description, please sign up. Uh, crypto market, not much happening with Bitcoin right now. Still consolidating, still moving sideways and building support levels after the big correction we had. But Ethereum has been pumping. It's over $2,700, new all-time highs. If you're holding Ethereum, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see 3000 very soon. And I'm, of course, looking for a $10,000 Ethereum price this bull market, right? So we still got ways to go in the bull market. And uh, I'm certainly looking forward to that because that will make me some nice uh, or I would get some nice returns on my investment there. So here's the big news, guys. Ripple wants to go public after settling the SEC lawsuit, SBI CEO says. The largest outside Ripple shareholder believes that X, the XRP-related firm will go public shortly after settling its lawsuit with the SEC. Now, in my interview with Brad Garlinghouse some a week ago, we kind of discussed this. You know, when I asked them, hey, what, what did you think about the Coinbase IPO? When will Ripple IPO? And, you know, he said, look, the, the Coinbase IPO is like NASDAQ IPOing back in the uh, mid-90s, right? This is big. This is significant. And many more companies will be going public in the next uh, few years. And certainly Ripple is going to be one of them. But he mentioned, look, we got to get this SEC thing sorted out. Now, Mr. Yoshitaka Katao will, of course, have more insight than uh, than many of us, right? Because he's obviously an investor in Ripple. Um, so let me give you some details here. Yoshitaka Katao, CEO of Japanese financial giant SBI Group, claimed that Ripple plans to become a public company after the firm settles a legal action brought against it by the United States SEC. Uh, speaking on a Wednesday earnings presentation call, Katal said that Ripple, uh, both Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and executive chairman Chris Larson are planning to take the uh, take Ripple public. Excuse me. Here's a quote: After the current lawsuit, Ripple will go public. The current CEO wants to do that. Chris wants to do that. Uh, Katal said that SBI's investment in Ripple would pay off following a potential public listing, noting that SBI is the largest outside shareholder of Ripple. Katal further predicted that a blockchain consortium, R3, another industry company actively supported by SBI, will go will also go public one day. Now, a couple things here, guys. We know Mr. Yoshitaka Katao is bullish on XRP. He wants to have it used in, in not only banking transactions, but just normal currency transactions. If you guys saw my interview with um, SBI Ripple Asia CEO, Adam Trademan from uh, about uh, almost a year ago, he talked about this. Mr. Yoshitaka Katao wants to have XRP used at the World Forum. If you wanna buy a, a soda or something there, um, the, excuse me, the World Fair, um, I, I said forum, the World Fair, um, he wants that, you know, the XRP to be used. And I'll put a link to that uh, interview. You definitely want to check it out. And obviously, he's trying to boost adoption of XRP overseas. And they've been giving their shareholders, SBI has been giving their shareholders XRP. So he's bullish on it. Now, the second layer of this, R3. Remember, R3 and Ripple had the legal dispute. They were supposed to work together. And then there was a settlement. And R3 got some XRP. It was estimated to be probably a little bit over a billion XRP. So they are also looking to leverage it, right? And having these companies go public, as we talked about with the Coinbase IPO, gives this crypto market mass awareness. And it gives the opportunity for the digital assets to benefit as well as the companies to benefit because of the uh, the, the, the visibility, the awareness, the, the brand building that uh, going public offers, right? And as I've stated many times, I wish I was an accredited investor because I would 
also be investing in the companies like Ripple and R3, right? But obviously you have to be an accredited investor, but we get to hold the assets, guys. That's what makes this new asset class um, pretty amazing, right? It's global, it's borderless, it's on the blockchain, and you can participate in it even if you just put a hundred bucks in, right? You could buy a hundred dollars in XRP and you're a part of the asset class. That's what makes it amazing. So uh, here's a quote from what uh, Katow had to say, say, we have been investing in fintech companies and we adopt that technology in our group and also we spread that technology across the industry. That is SVI Group's basic strategy, Katow said. So. This is awesome, um, and he, uh, it looks like that was the end of his quotes, but obviously, once again, he's bullish on XRP, and if you haven't seen that interview with Adam Trademan, once again, I'll put a link in the description, and uh, it, go, these companies going public is just going to be huge for the crypto market. Now, speaking of uh, companies going public, Coinbase made a huge update th- here. They said, we're now offering customers in the US a simple and speedy way to buy crypto on Coinbase using PayPal. We're now one step further in bringing everyone easy and secure access to the crypto economy. Learn more here and they point to a blog post on their website. So um, let's see here as far as uh, the details. So if you have an existing PayPal account, you'll be able to start making transactions on Coinbase right away. Plus, there's no need to add bank accounts or credit cards directly to Coinbase. You can continue using PayPal securely man- and securely manage um, your, your information. So once, let's see here, once you're done, you can make a purchase up to $25,000 a day with your PayPal account. So that's the limit. Um, obviously, you'll need to integrate it and set up some uh, two-factor authentication and all that good stuff. Now, some of you are going to be like, who cares? I'm not going to use PayPal to buy crypto on Coinbase, blah, blah, blah. This is not for you and I, my friends. You know, we are the early adopters. We're more sophisticated. We understand the technology. We understand custodying your own crypto, um, how to to buy and sell crypto and all of that, right? You and I are are a a specific demographic um, of early adopters. There's going to be people coming in who are just going to want the easy way to buy Bitcoin and whatever else. Right? They're just going to be like, oh, I can buy a PayPal. Cool. Connect my PayPal account. Boom. I bought a, a few hundred bucks in Bitcoin, a few hundred bucks in Ethereum, XRP, blah, blah, blah. And you have to think about that. Not everybody does the same thing. Not everybody's in the same walk of life. Not everybody's tech savvy, right? So you have to rem- uh, you have to keep these things in mind. And, and this further builds out the on and off ramps for crypto. And that's going to be important as this bull market takes off and we go more mainstream and you see floods of people jumping into the market. Now, this news right here is, is huge. And I think uh, game theory suggests that other countries are going to follow suit. Their headline reads, damn huge, Germany opens up to institutional crypto funds. A new law means that around 4,000 existing institutional investment funds will now be eligible to invest in crypto assets. That's music to my ears, uh, folks. This is awesome. So new legislation enabling 4,000 special funds, if I'm reading that right, to invest in crypto assets become law in, becomes law in Germany on July 1st. Mark it on your calendar. So special uh, special funds are favored by institutional investors and interest in them is now exploding according to analysts. This is awesome. Um, guys, you see how early we are? These things are happening now. You think they would have happened years ago, but we're still early in the adoption curve. And that's why you and I who are here early and we've been here in the bear markets buying the lows, we have the potential to make significant returns, life-changing money, and and I hope many of you see that. That's why I point to those macro-level charts like the stock-to-flow model for Bitcoin so you understand where we are. You have to zoom out. If you're looking at the daily, weekly, monthly charts, you're going to be disappointed because the market's so volatile. You have to zoom out, guys, um, and we're going to see a lot of capital flow into this asset class. And obviously here in the United States, we're waiting for a few things as we covered in yesterday's video with the SEC. Once a Bitcoin ETF and multiple Bitcoin ETFs are are approved, um, we're going to see retirement accounts, a lot of capital sitting on the sidelines jump in. Remember what Charles Schwab, what they just recently said, their CEO, hey, we want to jump into crypto, but we need regulatory clarity from the SEC. I do believe we'll eventually get the regulatory clarity. 
But that capital is sitting there waiting, waiting on the sidelines, my friends. This this is why I hope you guys grasp a, why a Bitcoin ETF and it starts with a Bitcoin ETF. Then they're going to have an Ethereum ETF, XRP and so forth. Why that's so important. And uh, the regulatory clarity for these companies to just go buy it, even if they don't want to use an ETF, right? So speaking of Bitcoin ETFs, Bitcoin ETF hopeful Wisdom Tree lists Ethereum ETP in Germany and Switzerland. The company's application to list a Bitcoin ETF in the United States is currently being reviewed by the SEC. You know, like I said in yesterday's video, these co these companies are going to go overseas. They're going to go to Canada where they're getting approved. And that's why I think Congress needs to step in to, to push the SEC out of the way here or get them to get their act together because these companies are going to go overseas where they can list their their etps and etfs and make money there right so the physically backed uh etp trading under the ticker ethw will track the spot price of ethereum and has an expense ratio of point of uh, 0 0.95 percent wisdom tree said in an email uh, emailed in an email announcement thursday uh, 21 shares and eth group both listed ethereum backed etp in germany in march while such products have been listed on the swiss exchange for some years so us come on get it get your act together the sec is is holding this whole thing up and you see these other countries they're moving ahead right uh, but nevertheless guys crypto is global that's why i'm not too overly concerned even though we're being delayed here in the united states because the value and trading volumes many of it comes from overseas not just the united states now the united states is the largest capital market of course so we would love to see that money from the is sitting on the sidelines jump in but the good thing is germany and, and south korea and wherever else right volume is coming from there these these, these places where they have regulatory clarity now uh, a sign of a growing asset class, and uh, you just see the number of acquisitions and investments just continue to grow. And Paxos raises three hundred million dollars, joins Crypto Unicorn Club at two at a two point four billion dollar valuation. The back end provider for PayPal and Venmo is raising confidence capital to expand operations, said CEO Charles Cascarilla. So uh, the $300 million Series D was led by Oak, a growth capital firm focused on healthcare and fintech. Previous investors, uh, Declaration Partners, PayPal Ventures, Mithril Capital, and others were also involved. Paxos announced a $142 million Series C in December. So these companies are raising significant amount of money. And remember, the, the idea here is People want to return on their investment. They're not just throwing money at these random companies and like startups. They they see what's on the horizon for crypto. So everybody's trying to get uh, their stake in the ground here. And and um, obviously there's there's ways to go. As mentioned, this bull market itself has ways to go. There's future bull markets. Um, obviously the the mass adoption. We're still early. Um, there, well, what are, what are we one or two percent of the the world's population that's involved in crypto right now? Imagine what it will be at twenty percent of the world population right so great to see companies like this are getting investments crypto companies i should say finally you know we've talked about the token economy the digital economy on this channel for a long time and we see stock exchanges banks credit card companies jumping in mastercard we know is getting involved in crypto but check this out mastercard to explore applications it can build on top of cbdc central bank digital currencies in the company's latest quarterly earnings call ceo michael maybach noted the company is investing in smart contract technology to pair with central bank digital currencies this is why you know i've said before cbdc's are going to benefit crypto because it's building out that digital in ecosystem with interoperability it's going to make it much easier for people to buy and and, and sell crypto right i uh, think about you you don't you won't necessarily need to sign up for ach or link your bank account or whatever if you have um cbdc's a digital dollar or whatever and it's already tokenized it makes it much easier to to jump in and out of crypto right so you see here these companies they're working with central banks um, and they're looking to help them build their CBDCs and there's going to be a full integration. You know, when I interviewed Chris Giancarlo, who's working on the digital dollar project, I asked them, you know, how would the CBDCs or digital dollar be distributed? He said it would actually be sent to your bank account, to your local bank, and, and it's going to come from the Federal Reserve. So 
credit card companies are going to be hooked up bank your local banks or your, you know if you're with bank of america chase community bank whatever it is it's going to be sent the cbdc's are going to be sent there and obviously the on and off rails need to be set up to to buy sell trade whatever spend and that's why you have credit card companies getting involved so i hope you guys see what's happening here the full token economy is coming together and both the private and public sector governments involved and all kinds of companies now so very bullish guys very bullish and we got ways to go and there's big things to come so once again i'll put a link to um, my interview with adam trademan and as well as chris giancarlo on um, the digital dollar in the description be sure to watch that those interviews it just gives you an understanding of what's being built and what's the vision here so guys what do you think about this news um i certainly think ripple could certainly ipo after the sec loss i i, I think that would be smart <laughs> because we'll probably see a price explosion for xrp once the um the, the a lawsuit is settled it'll be the floodgates opening up here so uh leave your thoughts and comments below hit the thumbs up button share this video and i'll talk to you all later Thank you.